Hi everyone, this is Tim Young with Elevate Software, and this is an overview of our upcoming Elevate Web Builder 2 web development product. The product is still in development, but we will be releasing an early experience version for component developers soon, and we wanted to both show you what is new or different, as well as give you information on how to contact us and be put on the list to receive an early experience version of the product. Please stick around until the end of the video to find out how. So, let's start with the biggest change to Elevate Web Builder for component developers the design time environment. Elevate Web Builder 1 had a static design time environment that could not be changed by anyone other than Elevate software. Furthermore, it was very time consuming for us to create new controls because the controls needed to be implemented first in native code for inclusion in the IDE and then in runtime code for applications and the two processes were not very similar. Elevate Web Builder 2 removes these restrictions and allows the component developer to develop a single source set of controls that look and behave the same at runtime and design time. For example, here is the code for the T button control. Elevate Web Builder 2 bridges the design time and runtime divide through a user interface abstraction layer. This layer is responsible for managing all facets of the, of the user interface and thus allows the, de the developer to concentrate on the core functionality of his or her controls. The user interface layer automatically handles the visual display of user interface elements including backgrounds, borders, corners, fonts, shadows, opacity, and stacking order. The layout of user, user interface elements including margins, padding, and constraints in addition, it can manage how an element is positioned, how it stretches, and how it consumes space in the layout. The handling of tabs and focus for user interface elements. The dispatching of events for user interface elements. And finally, the change management for user interface elements, including bulk updates. The building blocks for the user interface layer are elements. Controls always use at least one element, but may contain other elements, as well as other controls. The skin of the user interface layer is implemented using interfaces, not to be confused with COM type interfaces in Delphi. For example, here is the interface for the T button control. Interfaces can be applied to controls to achieve a given look and feel, and are included in the component library by using a compiler directory. Interfaces are defined with a specific class name that is used to connect the interface to a specific control. Normally, the class name is the same as an actual component library class, but this is not a requirement, and the interface class name can actually be any name that you wish. Each interface is comprised of one or more states, and these states allow you to change the look and feel of a control as its state changes. For example, with the T button control, the state changes from normal to pushed whenever a mouse down event occurs within the bounds of the control. Each defined interface state, like the controls themselves, is comprised of one or more named elements. These element names are what is used to look up an element when an interface is applied to a control. For example, there are two elements that make up the T button control, a base element and a caption element. It is very easy to modify the look and feel of a given interface. To demonstrate, I will now modify the background gradient of the T-button interface so that it is a different color. After modifying and saving the interface, we now need to rebuild the component library so that it reflects the changes to the interface at design time. As you can see, the buttons now use the new gradient color at design time, and they are now also changed at runtime. Let's put these back because they are really ugly. Okay. 
Elevate Web Builder 2 also supports design time event dispatching of certain events like visibility, sizing, and mouse events. This allows the component developer to create controls that the user can interact with at design time. The T-Page panel and T-Toolbar controls are examples of such controls. As you can see, there are buttons defined for the T-Page panel control that allow the user to add and remove pages from the control at design time. These buttons exist only at design time. The user can also select a page to work with by simply clicking on the tab for the page. The final area that I will be covering is the layout management for controls. With any modern user interface, it is important that an application's interface adapt to the constraints of the environment in which it is being run. Elevate Web Builder 2 makes this easy by providing, the, or by providing automatic layout management of controls. Let me illustrate this by creating a new form and setting up some controls so that they use the layout management functionality. We'll create a login dialog with a group panel for the username and password along with OK and Cancel buttons. First, let's go ahead and define some margins for the button. We'll need to define a bottom margin and a right margin. The layout management uses four attributes in addition to the control margins. Position, stretch direction, space consumption direction, and a consumption reset indicator. These four attributes provide all the information that Elevate Web Builder needs to lay out a given control relative to its container and to its sibling controls. This button is going to be the cancel button, so let's set the layout position to the bottom right, and the layout consumption direction to the left. I'm now going to make a copy of the existing button and paste in the copy. As you can see, the new button control is automatically laid out to the left of the existing button. This is because the existing button control specified that it consumes the layout space of its container in a leftward direction. However, with the OK button, we're going to need to stop consuming space in the leftward direction and start consuming space towards the top of the container's layout space. The reset property allows you to do this by resetting the layout space to the last reset point in the layout before consuming any space. This means that the current layout space will be reset to the entire form's client area and then the vertical space for the OK button will be consumed. Now we can drop a group panel control on the form and set its layout properties so that it consumes the rest of the layout space. and that's all there is to it. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we will be starting an early experience program for component developers soon. If you're an existing component developer or company and would like to get an early copy of Elevate, Elevate Web Builder 2, please contact Sam Young at samyoung at elevatesoft.com. Put it up on the screen. You will be notified via email as soon as the early experience program starts. As always, please feel free to contact us at any time with any questions or comments you may have, and thank you very much for your time.